Hey, g'day coaches, Warren here from the rugby site. We're really excited to be launching this new match content review service on the rugby site, so a big thanks for signing up. And if you haven't, check it out, because we've got a great group of players and coaches ready and waiting to analyse the videos that you send in, including former internationals, super rugby coaches, and top flight players and coaches from all around the globe. We think the MCR is going to be a great asset to your team and for you as a coach. But in order for them to do the review, uh, and a quality one at that, we need some decent footage. So today, I'm just going to talk to you briefly about a few tricks and tips that I can offer that hopefully will help you get really good quality video footage that you can provide our analysts so they can get back to you with really good advice and feedback on what they're seeing. Right, so let's talk about what we're going to video your game on. Now, most of us have got a smartphone or a tablet of some description. Now the great thing about these is they're really high quality video these days. This is an old one, I'm just using it as a prop. They're all automatic so you don't have to worry about the technical stuff, you just point and push. Now there are some traps though. Firstly you want to make sure you have plenty of storage on your device and that your battery is fully charged. You don't want this running out during the game. Let's not video like this, let's go horizontal or landscape. Use two hands and make sure it's kept nice and steady. We've all had to sit there in the past and watch videos of guys yarning with their mates and it's all over the place. It's horrible to watch and it will make it really difficult for our analysts to view. So let's try and go two hands and keep it nice and steady. They do have their limitations of course because if there's play happening on the far side of the field and you're wanting us to look at set piece, uh, scrums or lineouts or breakdowns and it's on the far side, it's going to be hard to view and difficult to analyse. These are better for looking at defensive setups and attacking setups because they have quite a wide lens and so you're going to be able to see what each team's doing and how your defence is reacting to attack and vice versa. And here's a good example of some footage that I shot recently. Now notice the high position, you can see right across the field what the defence is doing and how the attack are lining up and shaping up. So this is a great angle and good footage to analyse and an excellent example of the quality of footage you can get from a smartphone. You'll see in this example, I've filmed this from the ground level and it's very difficult to see what's happening on the far side of the field in that breakdown area and our analysts would have trouble being able to analyse this accurately. You can see what's happening defensively with the green and white team, but uh, as the play comes nearer to this camera, you'll see that the players drop out of frame and it's still very difficult for our analysts to understand or give a clear indication of what they think is going right or wrong defensively. The other thing is maybe you want to go end on behind the dead ball line and the behind the goal posts where you can see the holes in the defence and see where attacks hitting those holes. The other trick is to try and get above the action, so go up a bank or into a stand if there's one there so you can look down and see quite clearly what's happening and it's much better for our analysts to look and see what's going on without lots of disturbances happening in the foreground. If you want to video your set piece, training is always a good place to have a phone because you can get in nice and close and you can see what uh, all your players are doing you can get in and really get the specifics for us to be able to analyse that. If you're lucky enough to have a bigger camera like this, this is what I use for the rugby side all the time. Uh, the good thing is that they have a zoom lens so you can see the action from the other side of the field. A camera like this is a lot more technical and a lot more can go wrong with it. There are smaller versions of handheld cameras, but if you know what you're doing or have someone else in your setup that knows what they're doing, these are a much better tool to use because the image quality is far superior and you'll have the advantage of a zoom lens that can capture action on the other side of the field as well as wide. Uh, a lot of guys have uh, GoPros these days and the latest versions have got a stabiliser in them so you get really nice quality uh, footage again. Very wide lenses so you'll get to see all your attack and defence but a little bit more fiddly to use. If you've got one really good for trainings, I wear mine on the chest mount and they're also a really good way to assess yourself in the way you coach. Seal it, seal it, good work, good work. But it also gives you an extra set of eyes so you can sit down and review your training session that evening. And often I find I pick up things I haven't seen at training during the session. You can record game video on them but having such a wide lens uh, it might be uh, hard to see the detail that you want to show us. The other thing is, if you're lucky enough, you might have a drone. Now, a lot of the top teams these days are using drones. You can pop them up at training, get them over top of a set piece, really good for getting over top of scrums and lineouts. At trainings, it's not a problem, but they're a little bit tricky to have at games. You've got to have an area where you're flying it, where you're not over top of people's heads. And it's always important to check with local airway authorities to make sure that it's okay to fly in the area. But you can see the footage you get from them is magic and you get a great picture of what's going on the field from side to side. Another trick that I sometimes use is I shoot things in slow motion or off speed. It's a really good way of capturing the detail of what's going on in say the tackle technique 
or also around the breakdown area. It really slows things down and gives you plenty of time to see who's in good positions and who's not. And this will also give our analysts a great opportunity to critique tackle technique and the breakdown area. So now you have your video for analysis in the can, as they say, and you uploaded it to your computer. You go to the rugby site, you find our plans and pricing, click on analysis, and it'll take you to the analysis page. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see in green our Dropbox. You click on that, and that takes you to the upload window where you choose your files, select the file that you want to send to us, and then it's in our hands. Simple as that. Once your video has been analyzed, we'll re-upload it to Huddle, where you'll receive a notification. Now once you get this, you can go back in and view the comments and remarks that our coaches have made, and uh, hopefully give you some ideas on how to rectify a few problems that you might be having with your team. You'll also receive a session plan from your analyst that you can use at your next training session to help rectify the problems that the analyst has highlighted in your video. As well as that, we'll also give you direct links to videos on the rugby site that we think are appropriate to the issues that you're having with your team and how to fix them from some of the world's best rugby brains. Now videoing is not the easiest thing, it's easy to make mistakes, but if you get it right, it's a really valuable tool to use, which will really help your team and you as a coach. Good luck.